Hi there, I'm Nidhi Johnny. I'm a wireless LAN technical marketing engineer for HPE Aruba Networking. And in this video, we will look into the automated Wi-Fi RF management service called AirMatch. We will focus on AirMatch for access points running AOS 10 and above. In this video, we will cover an overview of the AirMatch service and then we will go through its functionalities and workflow. We will be covering a detailed workflow of the AirMatch service. Then we will look into the different optimizations done by AirMatch in AOS 10. We will finish off with the channel quality metric, which is an additional and optional metric that can be utilized by AirMatch for enhancing its computation. AirMatch is HP Aruba Networking's radio resource management service. For access points running AOS 10 and managed by HP Aruba Networking Central, AirMatch is one of the cloud services in Central. AirMatch allows networks to quickly adapt to changing RF conditions like higher density, co-channel interference, coverage gaps, and roaming. Along with all these features, AirMatch also facilitates the functioning of other services in Central, which we will see later in this video. AirMatch monitors radio resources on APs and supports bandwidth and ARP optimization for WLAN deployments. AirMatch goes beyond adaptive radio management by utilizing AI or machine learning to provide automated radio frequency optimization. Instead of analyzing at each individual AP like in the ARM model, AirMatch uses analytics across the entire WLAN. So with AirMatch enabled, we have enhanced roaming due to even distribution of EARP to access points, instantaneous response to high noise and radar events by localized channel changes, proactive channel power and bandwidth assignments which mitigates co-channel interference, and it is available for both AOS 8 and AOS 10 deployments. So it is supported in environments utilizing the Aruba Mobility Conductor, that is in AOS 8, and also in Central for access points running AOS 10. Now let's look at the main functions of AirMatch. First is to manage radio resources. AirMatch manages the radios on the access points. Depending on dual radio or tri-radio setup, AirMatch manages how these radios operate. For example, we have 610 series access points which are dual radio but support tri-band setup. So AirMatch automatically allocates the frequency band to the two radios on these APs. Another function is it allocates channels. AirMatch allocates the best channels for the APs to broadcast on. Next is channel bandwidth. AirMatch computes the best channel bandwidth. It adapts quickly to changing RF environments and computes the best channel and channel bandwidth. Finally, it computes access points, transmit power, and fine-tunes the power settings to minimize EARP fluctuations. In addition to these, AirMatch also offers other services in Central. It provides the neighbor AP list to the key management service and the AP partition info to the live upgrade service in Central. The neighbor AP list allows for faster roaming, while the partition info is utilized by the live upgrade service when upgrading the firmware on the APs. Now let's take a look at the workflow of the AirMatch service. This is a high-level workflow overview of the AirMatch service. Access points send their RF telemetry data to HP Aruba Networking Central. The AirMatch service in Central utilizes this data to compute optimal RF solutions. To do this, the system divides the network into partitions, calculates the optimal channel plan for each partition, and then assesses for potential improvements. If improvements are identified, the system applies the changes to the APs at the scheduled time. If no improvements are found, the existing RF plan for the APs remains unchanged. Alright, now let's take a detailed look at the workflow. Access points scan other channels when not serving time-critical applications, so they listen to neighboring access point beacons. This beacon information is sent to the AirMatch service in Central, which then calculates path loss information. You can view the path loss information using the REST API as shown here. We will cover AirMatch APIs in detail in the next video in the playlist. The path loss database is then used to create a graph representation of the relationships between the access points. So here you can see the graphical representation of the APs relationship with the neighboring APs. You can see the AP in center and its relationship with the neighboring APs. So we have the AP sending the RF telemetry to the AirMatch service in Central. AirMatch then calculates the path loss information and stores it to a database. The path loss database is then used to form a graphical representation of the AP's relationship with its neighbors. 
Then the air mat service in central divides the network into different partitions. Let's look at this in detail. So in order for air mats to compute a channel plan for each access point, it needs to take into account all neighbor access points, channel info, along with other parameters. Computing a channel plan becomes an NP hard problem. It is necessary to limit the problem to a smaller number of APs, otherwise it would take too much time to compute and it would be a resource intensive process. Let's look at how air match partitions the network in detail. So consider we have a large WLAN deployment which includes thousands of APs managed by Central and AirMatch is enabled. To compute channel plan for APs, AirMatch will divide the network into different RF domains and each domain will have multiple RF partitions. So you can see here we have two RF domains, RF domain 0 and RF domain 1. RF domains are distinct regions which has no RF relation or in other words, no APs that can see each other such as two buildings in different parts of a city. You can see here the RF domain partition 0 and 1 do not have any RF relation between them. Partitions can be in the same RF domain and can have APs that can see each other. An RF partition can have 100 to 300 APs. The numbers you see here can be considered as APs and the RF relationship between them is denoted by the lines. An RF relationship means that the AP can hear the other AP beacons. Once the network is divided into multiple partitions, AirMatch computes the RF plan for the APs. So for each partition, it does the following. AirMatch picks which frequency band a radio should operate on, such as on AP615, which has two radios but can operate on all three bands. Then it removes the channels that have been affected by radar and noise for 24 hours. AirMatch also picks uniform channel width for entire partition. Then it picks the preferred channel for each radio. Then it attempts to even out the EARP distribution to help with roaming. Finally, it computes a solution once a day and applies the changes at the configured time. Air match optimizations can be categorized into two types, scheduled and reactive. Let's see them in detail. Scheduled optimization is the most common air match optimization. This is a configurable parameter in central and by default optimizations are scheduled for 5 am. So AirMatch will periodically calculate new RF plans but only apply it at the scheduled time. Next we have reactive optimizations which are locally done by the APs. Reactive optimizations are done by the APs when a change in RF environment is detected like noise, radar etc. It is also done when we have enabled the channel quality metric. So the channel quality metric is a channel computation enhancement for air match that is used for local channel change decisions. We will look into this in detail in the next slide. Reactive optimizations are also triggered when there is a configuration change in minimum and maximum channel bandwidth. So what are the results of these changes? When there is noise or radar detected, radios will change channel instantaneously and affected channel will be reported to the air match service. The channel will not be used for the next air match computation for that radio. When channel quality metric is enabled, air match receives data that impact the channels and it avoids the impacted channels in the channel computation for next 24 hours. By default, the channel quality metric is disabled. So you need to manually enable it for air match to consider channel metrics for reactive channel changes. We will look at the channel quality aware settings in the air match configuration section in HP Aruba Networking Central. And finally, for changes in bandwidth configuration, channel bandwidth will be changed instantaneously by the AP. It will pick the channel with least interference with channel randomization logic. These channels might be overwritten in the next air match run. Now before we move on to the next video, let's look into the channel quality metric. Starting AOS 10.4, channel quality was added as an additional computation enhancement for air match. It includes parameters like high retry rate, non-Wi-Fi interference, MAC and PHY errors. When AirMatch receives data that impacts channels, it avoids those channels in the channel computation for next 24 hours. By default, this option is disabled. When enabling this option, we can also specify the channel quality threshold, which is the percentage value below which AirMatch will initiate a channel change. And the channel quality wait time specifies the time after which AirMatch initiates a channel change 
after the channel quality is below the threshold value. We will see how we can configure this in the next video where we discuss air match configuration parameters in HPE Aruba Networking Central for AOS 10 APs. And that's it for this video. In the next video, we will look into the RF parameters that can be configured in HP Aruba Networking Central for AOS 10 APs. Hope this video was helpful. Thank you for watching.